These are the drawings that I did for my shot. As you can see, they're very messy, but it doesn't really matter because they're only for you. And they allow you to experiment with different poses and different ways of doing the shot. It's also very cheap to experiment because unlike in 3D, you can easily rub things out and change things. If you find it hard to get ideas for how to do the shot, you can look at yourself in the mirror or you can even record yourself with video and try different things out. Before you move on to the next step, you should have a clear idea of what you want to accomplish. And now we can turn on the computer and do step two, which is the block. And here we're finally moving into 3D. You can refer to your thumbnails and plot in each main pose. It's very important that you get these poses right at this stage because it's hard to change them radically later. So take your time and make sure you have exactly what you want. I'm using constant interpolation in Blender which means that the computer isn't trying to fill in the blanks between the keyframes. You can see that these different poses are on the screen for exactly the same amount of time. At the bottom this white line represents time and each diamond represents a pose. Now let's move on to the third step, which is timing. Here I'm taking the same poses, but then offsetting them in time. Now you can see I've given the part where he's preparing a lot more time and I've made the hit very quick. Good timing can be hard, but you can refer to video material or also look at yourself in the mirror and see what you do. Now, let's talk about the breakdown. The breakdown is an often overlooked step, but it's very important for defining the movements of your characters. It defines how you go from one pose to another. And here I'm turning on linear animation. And you'll see I've added a little bit more definition to how he picks up the club in the beginning and also how he does the swing and settles at the end. I'm still keyframing all the bones inside of the character. And here at the bottom, you can see that the breakdowns are represented in purple. And I've added a breakdown in between almost all of the yellow keys. The animation is still very robotic, however, so we'll fix that in the finaling step. Now, I've turned on Bezier curves and I've added more drawings or poses, as you might say, to fix the arcs and add a little bit more overlapping action, also smoothing things out and just giving it the right amount of snap. I've also added in some moving holes when he prepares to shoot, which means that the character doesn't stand completely still. And here at the bottom, you'll see there are keyframes now on almost every frame. And that's fine because we've done things very structured. So all these things I'm fixing and adding in, I won't have to go back and change later. And just for fun, I've added a rendered version. The great thing about rendering it out is we can add motion blur, which just add a little bit more realism to the scene. And now to recap, this is the block, just the basic poses with equal timing. And now, the timing part, we're timing the pose, giving it the right spacing in between each pose. With the breakdown, we're adding more definition, how does it get between each keyframe? And finally, adding polish.